Um, I'm going to tiptoe around the female male thing and just focus on what I think um, young people should be doing. Um, may not even be male um, in the sense of MGTOW is obviously a growing group and I understand that but at the same time I think this is relevant to a larger larger group anyway. If you're like 17 to 30 you shouldn't even be considering going down the route of a long term relationship yet anyway. It's where people make most of their mistakes that become lifelong problems um, because even if you have children early on the chances of the relationship breaking down during the first few years is very high. Um, yet you haven't even enjoyed life yet. Kids, you don't need them. Kids you can come back to. You know, if you're 30 something, think, you know, I'll have some kids. By that time, you've already surrounded yourself with knowledge. But up until that point, be aware there is more to life. You've only just come out of schooling, you're only in your first job, whatever. You haven't experienced life yet, and this is why I want to focus on this right now. First thing is, relationships don't need to start. You don't need to start a long-term relationship um, in the sense of believing it's long-term. Now, I would recommend if you want to be in a relationship, it's fine, but not one you lock yourself into. A lot of the stuff that people put off in life and never achieve is because of commitments that are often dragged in because of relationships. For example, maybe you want to go and travel Asia, but your partner can't afford it or whatever. So you put it off and you put it off and then you never get there. Just say, well, I'm going. It's going to cost me, I don't know, whatever you budgeted for. I have no idea where you're going. Um, and say, if you want to come, it's going to cost you that. If you don't, I'll see you when I get back. Simple as that. Be more independent and more um, self-reliant in the sense that make your own decisions. Don't get roped into, well, you know, we, we were thinking about, it. no, there is no we, it's you. You're too young to be a we yet. It takes time to become a we. Um, the other side of that being is when you do do traveling, it will open up your mind to other things and the way corruption works and the way things are manipulated, um, which you often don't see from very insular countries. Um, Cause it doesn't matter what country you're from, they're all insular in some form because the media is all skewed in some form. Um, it's a bit like watching, I don't know, CNN and then suddenly you get watching Russia Today. They're completely different media outlets, yet they could be covering exactly the same story from a different perspective. But it's a good, um, it's a good version of understanding the differences, even where you're sat right now. So traveling will open you up to experience, knowledge, um, cultural differences, and from a relationship point of view, more people. Um, as such, your understanding of what is available where you are now could change considerably because you have more experience and experience more things. This is why people sometimes get hung up with um, guys like myself marrying women from Asia. It's like, oh, you must be desperate. You can't get a woman in your own country. Yada, yada, yada. And it, the joke being is, if you ask, <laughs> well, I've never met a guy that couldn't get a woman. Let's be honest, I haven't. I've never met a guy that's gone to the Philippines and said, you know what, I've never had a woman in my life. Predominantly, it's guys that have got sick of the way society's gone in the West and said, you know what, I don't want any more of that crap. I'll go, I'll go to Asia, do something different, meet somebody new. Um... And I think even the age is more to do with, um, it's a secondary thing. Yes, the Asian women are often much more attractive because they're often um, less, less McDonald's and more rice and chicken. Um, but the, the point being is they're viewpoint on the world is often different i mean it's like my wife here in spain you will often get people say to her that you why well a prime example of this was actually last week somebody said to her why is it asian people always smile which was <laughs> a funny thing 
Um, but my wife just left it off. But the, the point being is, it's true. There's a, a lot of people are very more upbeat, even though they've got less, because their focus is very different. Um, people will say it's family focus, it's this focus. Ultimately, it's because it's not consumer focused. They're not worried about the next door neighbor having a new BMW while you're still paying off your Volkswagen. You know, <laughs> they don't care. Um, there is, don't get me wrong, there is still that keep up with the Joneses going on, but only if you buy into it. I mean, most of the time it's just mobile phones. But either way, that experience will be something completely new to you. But it also means that if you can understand that you don't need as much as you're taught in the West, you start to realize you buy a lot of crap. I mean, I buy a lot of crap. Look at my boxes, but that's all camera gear and drones and stuff. But I recognize it, but I buy it out of profits. I don't buy it out of my um, initial funds. But the, the, the point being is we all do it. There's three bikes in there and they're stuck in there at the minute because I don't have a garage for them. But um, the, the point is we all do it. But when you go to Asia, etc., go to India, wherever, um, you can see the differences. And then sometimes you can see the vulgarity of the other side. If you go into Dubai and see some of the excess wealth, you're getting the other side of this, which is the needing to spend money. Um, I've mentioned this before when I was in Oman, you would hear the ringtones where it's the latest, um, what do you call it, Samsung. Then three months later, the ringtone will change because everyone's got the latest iPhone. Yet nobody's actually saying, why did you change your phone? It's a phone. Did you really need it? Or is it just because you just needed to spend money? And the bizarre thing is these countries are a consumer. Um, I, I don't even know how to describe it. They don't need to be spending money, let's put it this way. They need to be developing their own technologies and stuff and moving away away from oil dependency on the fact that other people need to buy their oil and actually developing other things. Um, but there's a, that is a prime example of just wasting money just for the sake of it. Um, putting gold on chocolates. A friend of mine used to do that. That was their job. Um, they used to put the, the gold leaf and stuff on chocolates and edible gold and for things like baby showers and stuff when a baby's been born they take these baskets and there'd be diamonds and all sorts in this stuff um i think their cheapest basket was about thirty thousand pounds and you're thinking but why and other people go because they can afford it yes but even so it's still i can't see the point but that's the sort of thing you get to because that's obviously excess wealth but even when you go back and Back, like say you toured India, toured Asia, etc. When you go back to the West and people are going, oh, look at this, look at that. You often disconnect from it. Um, it's like me. I like buying um, nice clothes and things. But at the same time, I'm not brand orientated. Um, I do have Nike and stuff for the gym. But that's beyond the only things that that I would buy that is brand orientated. I buy stuff I like, I buy things based on material, which is why um, <laughs> I really am materialistic in that sense. <laughs> um, the I actually wrote to Marks and Spencer complaining about their quality had declined and how they had gone, sold themselves to China. And they wrote back saying, well, we know you're like um, buying a lot of our products, but um, we think that you're wrong. And I'm like, really? Your share price says I'm right. <laughs> We've gone with these shirts that are like the color has gone a bit further up and it's going to have, you know, when you buy these Chinese shirts, they, they're cheaper because they cut the material off everywhere. <laughs> they squeeze an extra shirt into the roll. By taking it like up the back a little bit, we'll take a bit off here and a bit off here and reduce the size right down. Um, it comes from somewhere. And that, that's the thing. I was trying to explain to Marks and Spencer's and I say, well, you know, I'm like, I don't go to Marks and Spencer's to buy Chinese stuff. We, Marks and Spencer has always had a ethical way of working. Quality has always been reasonable, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the whole point is, I prefer that than going to 
some of the other ones which are just like look I've got a label on it um, and the quality is not as good but that was the point the quality is dropped on Marks and Spencers um, but yeah, I suppose that is branding in some ways it's just that you, unless you actually knew it was Marks and Spencers you wouldn't know I mean it doesn't need to say Dolce Gabbana or anything on it because I don't care um, but anyway going off on a tangent you, you get stuff that you like you start to move away from a lot of the materialistic stuff which helps you long term which is why I recommend traveling younger um, I also recommend if you can spend longer times out there and you realize that you can be more independent than relying on the educational system that is sold to you I spend time at some universities relating to maintenance and other things they are predominantly useless um, I, was, I was talking to somebody who actually teaches an English course and recently and I went through it and I just thought this is utter garbage because these people that have wrote this have never taught anybody they've gone from school to learning at university to teaching in university at no point the stuff they're trying to teach to students has actually involved them teaching students beyond teaching students how they should teach students with zero knowledge of how it you know because they're teaching teachers but at the same time no experience with students in something they're teaching you know for example if I were teaching engineering saying this is how you should put this and this is that that works that works on the board that works where we are right like say I was designing a fire alarm panel right works great on the board and I'm teaching these guys that are going to be the next generation of people teaching other uh, people to become engineers right fine when you go out to the field you realize that the design of this only works on the board because you've never even seen this thing working or operational which tells you the springs and things are on the wrong side of it because you can't reach them because it's a design fault but you've never got to a design fault because you've never actually used it practically and that's the prime example of the sort of thing I'm saying with education system so I do recommend like getting involved in things online teaching yourself a lot of stuff um, I also think blockchain technology is going to be here for the next three or four years and then it will start to evolve into a, another role of um, things on the same system. You know, at the end of the day, universities and that will try and control that as well. But by that time, if you already got into it now, get, it, get yourself, I mean, I know a wave here, so I've got two computer screens. Um, you get involved in it, get your knowledge going. Currently, there's jobs paying up to around $108,000 for people that understand the blockchain technology and can program, etc., etc. It's not as complicated as people are making out. I'll tell you that now. It's because it's a new technology. It's like the birth of the internet. When you start understanding how things fit together, you don't need to understand how to get to here. If you can start here and the gaps will fill in over time because the whole thing's going to evolve. Um, so the point being is it's an ideal time to get into it. When you've got salaries of nearly 200k uh, for, for doing something like that, but more importantly for traveling, guess what? It's computer based. As such, a lot of it you can move around with and that's one of the reasons I bring that up. And it's a new entity in the world. Instead of trying to do things like SEO, web design, da da da, where it's been hit over the head constantly with people rolling out of college on a daily basis that can do the same thing. This is something a little bit unique and different. It's, it's only just at the beginning. That's why I do recommend taking a look at that, especially if you're technology based. It's definitely worth taking a look at as being the next big thing. Um, yeah, so education, educate yourself. Don't rely on universities and things like that unless you need one of these duff documents that say you've got a diploma. You see it in um, a lot, of, I mean, especially the UK. UK is a, can't say what I want to say uh, due to due to foul language. Um, but even if, if you look at how to become a board of, on a board of directors where a lot of corporations, along with some of the organizations and committees and that, you need to have a degree 
And the joke being is, the degree for most of these, it doesn't need to be relevant to what the hell you're doing. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. You could have a degree in psychology and be a, on the board of directors for an engineering company. So a friend of mine, he is the head um, guy for a facilities management company. Um, his degree is based on chemistry. Nothing to do with what he does at all. He just evaluates contracts. Um, but the, he needed that A degree just to get to that level. Otherwise, you're stuck at management level. But then if you just need A degree, look at the ones that you can do quick and easy and just slip them through. You know, doesn't need to be the best degree because you're never going to use it unless you're doing it out of interest. And that's another story. But the, the main thing is here, realize training stuff that has value to you whether it's financial, whether it's educational, whether it's um, something that you have an interest in. Don't get bottlenecked into something where you're being told this is the best option for you. There is no best option for you that somebody can dictate to you because the best option to you is up to you. You're the person who knows what you want best. Um, and this is why I do recommend traveling first because if you travel first, you start to come back understanding exactly where you want to go in life. You start to realize you can be more independent and you can look after yourself. So everything up until that point is either going through the motions day to day or it's being dictated, whether it's parents, whether it's peer pressure, whatever, you're going this way. Once you've traveled a bit, you open your mind up to a whole load of things. And one of the things I will say myself, I wish I'd done what I'd done 10 years earlier. I've now been traveling since 2000 2007. So for me, it's 11 years pretty much in and out and around. You know, I've been in Spain, Philippines, Middle East, um, bits of Asia. But the point being is you create your ability to do this. There is no training course that could give me those opportunities. You've got to do it. And I did it. I created these opportunities. Even some stuff in the Philippines come about just because I was there. It's a bit like the, some of these guys in China that are like pretending, pretending to be the CEOs of companies or whatever because Chinese companies want a white face. There is nothing wrong with that. It's opportunity. And this is the thing, you, you will mature a lot faster because you understand how the world works a lot more. Because up until that point, when you do a race at school, there are no winners and losers. Everybody gets a certificate. There are no justifications for putting any effort in. Because if you're the slow fat kid, guess what? You get a certificate. The kid that's been running for the, the county and training three nights a week in the weekends, he gets a certificate. So who's the idiot? I'll leave that to you. But the point being is that's the way society is driven things. Well-rounded people that can't do anything for themselves. What I say is you can do a lot for yourself. You focus yourself on making it happen. You drive things forward. Now, when it comes to relationships, I know a lot of MGTOW guys want to stay on their own for forever. That's fine. You know, that, that, that's fine. But one of the things I want to say to other guys out there is just be aware you can protect yourself anyway from a lot of the stuff that falls into the legal system or whatever. First thing is you don't need to have kids. Second thing is you don't need to get married. I mean, one of the things you could use as a defense on that is like, oh, come on, half the marriages end in divorce. I'm not religious. You're not religious. So why do we need to get married? And then it becomes, well, I've always wanted a wedding. Why have you always wanted a wedding? And, you know, and you're already putting a lot of valid arguments forward. Because if you're not religious, it's not important to you. And it's not important to your partner. The reason mine's important is my wife is religious. And from my point of view, signing that contract, I, I honor my contracts. I've never, I've never not honored a contract in business or anything else. Because quite simply... That's the way I do. That's how, that's how I roll. Um, but the point being is, you've got to understand, there is nothing that says you must do this. And if anything, you should actually be like, why do you want to get married? 
Why do we have to live together? I think what we have right now is special because you can go and do your own thing at the weekends. I can do my things. And you know, the f one thing that I want to mention on this was quite important. A lot of this is based on guys that are being forced into being insecure because it's been driven that way. Women are being supposed to be more independent and da da da. Men are supposed to be masculine at the same time in touch with their feelings, complete conflict. Um, this is why traveling is important. Traveling gives you your independence and it will give you a lot more strength in self, uh, well, strength, self-discipline. Um, and if you do it for a long period of time, like say you went away for a year and had enough fun for six months, that baptism of fire <laughs> will drive you forward a lot. You'll grow up quite quickly on that. Um, always have an emergency fund to get home. That's one thing I'll say. And I always recommend do never spend your emergency fund ever. Um, what else would I say on that? So we've covered education, covered traveling, uh, covered relationships. And like I said, with kids, we've got a population problem in the world. We've got excess people. Um, unless you're actually planning on leaving a legacy or something else. Um, what you decide to have kids for is up to you. Um, myself, um, like I said, I don't really fit in the MGTOW in some ways, but other ways I do. Um, yeah, for me, kids are important. You know, the, but that's, that's for me anyway. You, know, you shouldn't even be talking about kids yet, not until you're past 30s. Um, but ultimately, you're either in charge of your world or you need to get in charge of it. You need to set your own path, destiny, and what drives you forward. If you're not doing that, traveling will give you that independence because you're disconnected from everything else. You're at a new beginning, a new track. Don't go with somebody that you can rely on. Don't go with, uh, I mean, sorry, go with your best friend or whatever. What I mean is don't travel with your, your dad or whatever, because the whole point is you're trying to empower yourself through your own independence, your own uh, ex exploration and finding your way in the world. And I know it sounds tough, but the other side of this, when you're 17 to 23, you're gonna find it difficult to find a good job anyway. You're gonna be the, the brunt of the crap jobs for a long time because it's just the way the world works. If you're going to travel around, do a bit more, explore things, research, self, bit of independence, etc., uh, you may find you never want another job, even if you only had one, because you'll find that you can do things on your own. You can be a contractor, consultant, or whatever, um, and you'll find you'll get more respect that way as well. But once you've done it, traveled, experienced, etc., you can start moving forward. Um, and I do understand why there's a growing number of people uh, on MGTOW. It's because of the way things are skewed. A lot of people have mentioned the court system. I think it's also much deeper than that in the sense that the court system has introduced this new environment where that with feminism has actually driven single parents. Now, not all single parents is based in separation or divorce. What you had is a movement that actually wanted women to work and have um, the ability to choose to work if they wanted to work, which is a feminist thing. And this is why I say a lot of this is state. It's not down to um, purely women in the sense of feminists. Feminists are not all women. <laughs> feminists are a group that shouts the loudest. And I would say it's... I can't really say, no, I'm not going to say it. But the, the point being is that group wanted women to be able to work, women to do this, women to do that. And you know what? State says, fantastic, get to work. And now women are working and men are working. The kids come home from school, neither parent at home because they're both working now. When I was a kid, my mother was always at home because she looked after the house. My dad went out to work. That was end of. Um, there's nothing to stop my mother working. 
she, the thing is, she didn't need to work. Um, because like when she first they first met, she was a bookbinder. Um, and this is the thing, a lot of the time there is work opportunities there. And we, I'm not getting into the pay gap stuff, that's another, another day, another dollar. Um, but the, the point being is recognize that a lot of this stuff is, is the government's doing. The government actually encouraged for both parents to be working and now there is a gap where the kids are now becoming dysfunctional because there is nobody at home when they get home for a cooked dinner. Rise of the microwave meals, the fast meals, the McDonald's, all this crap. Um, rise of obesity. And yet nobody focuses on this fundamental thing. The death of the traditional family. And the joke being is, there's no reason for it not to exist. This is the joke. We're in a world of automation. There is no need for both parties to be working all the time. But the argument being is, who stays at home? And nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody talks about that. You could actually turn around and say, in every household, the major uh, breadwinner is the one that works. The other one should stay at home. And the economy would adapt to it. End of. Um, but that's where a lot of this separation has started. And then obviously now you're starting to see people separate because there's a lot more stress and strain on the relationships because they often pass like ships on the night. They often get one partner that is not pulling their weight. And then we're, like I said, we're in a society now that is driven by just greed. It is greed because greed at a state level is greed in the fact that we need the big house, big car, big this, constant consumer spending instead of being content with what we have and appreciating what we have. Um, but that's why I like traveling. Traveling disconnects a lot of that stuff because you turn around and go, you know, somebody says, oh, I've just got a big curved TV. And I'm like, nice. I don't need a big curved TV, sorry, because I don't actually watch TV. I, I watch the odd bit on Netflix. I've got to admit that. I hold my hand up to that, but I do not watch TV. I do not watch adverts. I do not watch... Um, even some of the new stuff I've cut right back on because of how much it's biased. Um, but this is why I think it's important people do travel. I think it's male or female. Disconnect yourself from the matrix. Go off and experiment, experience, and then go back and you'll find your whole world has changed because you have. It's not that the, nothing else has. You have. You can see everything for what it really is. Anyway, thanks for watching.